Gravit, Arkansas, this is Shepherd's Chapel with Pastor Arnold Murray. Join with us now as Pastor Murray takes you on a book-by-book, chapter-by-chapter, line-by-line study of God's Word. Now, here is Pastor Murray. That we can get back into this book of Psalms. Remember Psalms, chapters 1 through 8, addresses man, human, the creation, even if you would. Chapters 9, or Psalms 9 through 15, talk about the man of this earth, even Antichrist, if you would, and then from 15 through 41, the Messiah. Who wrote Psalms? David, in large part. Did you look for any prophecy in the book of Psalms? Well, I would hope so. In Acts chapter 2, that chapter that speaks of Pentecost states very clear in the 30th verse that David was a prophet. Well, where's David's book of prophets? Where is there a prophet, uh, a prophetical book uh, that has David's signature? The book of Psalms. The Psalms are prophecy. So, when you hear me use them as prophecy, don't get all uptight. Read Acts chapter 2, verse 30. You'll feel a lot better about it. In the first lecture or two, as we get into the Psalms, I want you to know what Selah means. We'll use it and come, we'll cross it many times. Selah is a pause in the song, such as a pause in the music. It is placed there to connect, as a connecting point. In other words, the subject that was just discussed, sila means pause, meditate a moment, the connecting thought will follow. And it makes the Psalms very interesting. It makes you think long and hard to get the in-depth truth from them. We had covered up through chapter 3, Psalms 3 that is, and verse, we're ready for verse 6. We had just in verse 4 observed a sila, which actually meant and connected the peace with the prayer which brings that peace. With that thought in mind, Psalms 3, verse 6, let's go with it. And with our Father's blessings, we ask Him to lead us in His Word. Verse 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousand of people that have set themselves against me round about. Finish them the surety through prayer and peace, peace of mind that you can have through knowing God's truth. It's so beautiful. That should remind you that our scholars of the election of Deuteronomy chapter 32, that song of Moses, that song that we will be singing as we have the victory, reported and documented in Revelation 15. There it says, I will put one, and yes, even 10,000 to flight. You see, when you understand the way it's written, when you understand God's Word, you're standing on a sure foundation. It doesn't matter what the press states or anyone else. It's going to happen as it is written. You can count on it. If, if you don't have the faith to know and to believe that and to boldly teach His Word, whether there are 10,000 that disagree or not, that God's going to be with you as long as you will teach His Word as it is written. Verse 7, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten, underline that word in your mind, smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. You ever had a right smart crack on the cheekbone? That's painful, friend. Very painful. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. You have taken away their ability to chew, to absorb, to intake. You've made them harmless uh, with that crack on the cheek. They cannot eat up our blessings. They can't eat your blessings anyway when God uh, is standing nigh thee. And he is right now if you wish it, if you ask, for it is your inheritance. Make a mental note of the word smitten, verse 8. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Well, who does it belong to? It belongs to the Lord. You're not going to find it any other place or in any commodity other than Yahweh. Thy blessing 
is upon thy people, Selah. Selah here meaning pause. Think just a moment for the same thought. It is a connecting point between Psalms 3 and 4. The subject is not changed, in other words. Smitten, hold it in your mind, Psalms 4, the title of the song. To the chief musician. The chief musician means he who has the victory, which is to say Christ. On Neganoth, a psalm of David, what it really says, and I want to translate this for you fully and from the Hebrew so that you understand. That's why I wanted you to make a mental note of smitten, for Neganoth means smitings. So what does it say? He who has the victory on smitings. Who he smites and so forth. Do you see how important it is? But you need the full translation to understand. For the stage is set. This is a song sung by David, the prophet. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Uh, thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. God always hears your prayer. David said, you've enlarged me even, even uh, when I was in distress. You can do that. You know that God will. He will protect you. Where's your faith? Always use it. Verse 2. O ye sons of men, how long, or you might say until when, will ye turn my glory into shame? That is to say, they, the sons of men turn God's glory into idol worship, or worshiping instead of Jesus in this generation, not knowing the difference between instead of Christ and Christ. How long will you love vanity? How long will you <clears throat> love this emptiness that you're being taught? And seek after leasing. Do you know what leasing is? It's lies. You actually listen to the emptiness of your super preachers and seek their lies. You like to hear it. Don't worry, you're going to fly away. You don't have to worry about a thing. Blah, 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 blah. You know, that's real wisdom, is it not? Beloved, when you hear a trot like that, it didn't come from God's Word. You're listening to misguided children. So what they do, they do in ignorance. That's no excuse for following them. Do not listen to the deception. Use common sense. God expects you to. Verse 3. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly. God has redeemed those that follow him in wisdom, for himself. Set you aside for himself. For what purpose? For himself. The Lord will hear, will hear, will hear. Remember it. Will hear when I call upon him. Beloved, you can count on it. When you talk to the Father, he hears you quite well. It's just that our people are a little short-circuited when it comes to patience to know that it will come in his season. That's what wisdom is, is having the faith to know and trust to know. When you pray, He will hear you. Don't let, if there's any doubt in your mind, then you're just, you haven't quite made it, friend. If there's any doubt in your mind that God has heard you when you pray, you're not quite there yet. You're very immature as a Christian. For it is written many times. God hears you. Don't ever forget it. It lets you mature into a patience of waiting, whereby you know after you have this petition that he has you set aside for himself, for his own purpose, to fulfill his plan, for his pleasure, that he may enjoy the love that you send to him, share with him for your child. And he loves you dearly. It's not difficult to have faith when you know those events, that he does hear you, those true facts. Four. This is what you should do. Stand in awe. Awesome, the awesomeness of our Father, the creator of all things, and yet he loves you. He knows every hair that is on your head. He cares that much. He takes that much interest. And sin not. You stay away from it. Commune with your own heart upon your bed 
and be still. Be still means commune, think of the Scriptures, pray, and be still means be patient. Know that after he's heard you, you can wait. Selah. I, I don't know if I discussed the Selah following verse 2, and I think I should. What it actually does, it takes David's enemies and yours today and their acts and it shows you David's defense and yours. What is the defense? We just read it. God hears you. I'm talking of the Selah after verse 2. It takes the acts of our enemy and shows you then our defense. It connects the two points and how precious it is. Now, in verse 4, we come to another seal, a pause, think, sharpen up. That's what it means. You hear me use it in many other places in God's scripture. But here, he's telling you, sharpen up, stop, think, consider, be patient. This connects the sin or their sin with its being put away. How is it put away? Listen and learn. Sila. Five. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. You understand how important that is? You learn how to put sin away. Put your trust in the Lord. No. Put, well, why should I trust? Because He hears you. Trust strengthens patience in knowing He did hear you. As it is written in that great revelation, there's a, there's a vial, a bottle, let's say, that has all the prayers of the saints before Almighty God. Not in some corner, not in some culvert, culvert, not out of sight, but in front of God, in plain sight. He hears you. Trust Him. That's how you um, uh, offer Him sacrifices of righteousness. Do the right thing, in other words. Let your blessings and that that belongs to God, give it to God. And put your trust in Him. You can count on Him. I hope that with mature minds you understand what I was saying. A lot of weak people would say, well, He just put the touch on them for money. No, I didn't. I don't care. I don't care. It's God that does the blessing. And if I were to conjure you into sending an offering to receive a blessing, it's very possible it wouldn't happen anyway. The blessing comes from your uh, initiating the uh, the giving, not me. I won't. Uh, if, if you think that this man spends time raising money, forget it. I'll go off the air before I'll beg. I'm a servant of Almighty God, and those of the family that participate in our talk will take care of the rest. Uh, a word to the wise is sufficient. Put your trust in God. Verse six. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Oh, isn't that a doubter? You ever known anybody like that? Who's going to show us any good? Where's it going to come from? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. In other words, Lord, prove them wrong. Take that bunch of sinners and prove them wrong. The Kenites, the deceivers, those that chase after lies of false teaching, Lord, prove them wrong. Don't worry, he will someday. Verse 7. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. Just the truth, beloved, brings that gladness. More than in the time that there, that's the liars, the deceivers, corn and their wine increased. It would seem like that they had perhaps the largest thing going. But the very truth and its word means more to me than all their increase put together. There's no comparison between it and the blessings of God and true knowledge and understanding and visitation from the true Holy Spirit, not the spirit of Babel. How precious it is. It's too bad that more don't understand, but they will. It's coming. The Father loves his children, and the inheritance is set forth for those that will partake. What about you? Eight. I will both lay me down in peace. Can you do that? If you know he hears you and you trust him. Do you understand the way you put off the last sila? That you put off sin? That you put off worry? You lay down in peace and sleep. 
none of those nights laying awake and sleep for thou Lord only makest me dwell in safety that safety would probably be better translated in peace contentment comfort surety knowing that you have him looking over you every moment that lets that restful sleep it allows you mentally to be able to feel a concentrate concentrate to the point that you can connect thoughts you see in sila there is a great deal more than is often taught if you are not able as the very psalm opened to walk not in the counsel of the ungodly but take your counsel from God he says stop think connect this thought with the thought that follows because you see God's word flows it connects it's simple it's pure when you understand his word Psalm 5 I suppose we can say this is a prayer for divine aid do you need it? do you need divine aid? now listen to this prayer and I assure you he will hear you and listen closer to the chief musician this is to say to he that has the victory that's Christ up on you understand up on he hear a psalm of David again that prophet do you understand the prophecy that is hidden from most eyes in this world well first of all you're going to have to know what he hear means before you can understand the study and bless your heart I hope that it makes you happy when you understand it's concerning her that inherits let me say it again it's concerning her that inherits who is her? Israel and all those that believe upon Christ do you understand the title given by Christ he that has the victory up on are two she that has the inheritance you are a part of those that can claim that inheritance for it is God's promise to you remember this Sila in one of the prior chapters that said those connects those that just think that God is the creator with those that are consider him and know that he is a covenant God the covenant is a will so to speak that's another way of translating it it's a will it's the will of Almighty God left to in giving the inheritance to all those that will believe well but God's never going to die well that's true but his son did and through that comes the inheritance naturally to be risen again but fulfilling the covenant now to the chief musician that is Jesus Christ that has the victory upon to those that have the inheritance that's you a psalm of David the prophet listen closely verse 1 give ear to my words that means you listen to me O Lord consider my meditation O Father hear me listen to hearken unto the voice of my cry my King and my God for unto thee will I pray do you talk to the Father enough he'll listen and will listen and when I say you listen to me you can trust him you can count on him man may let you down but our father will never let you down for you are you are the one that he has allowed to inherit three my voice shalt thou hear in the morning O Lord in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up look up means wait I'm going to wait patiently. I'll make the prayer and I'm able to do that. Are you? Or do you pray to our Father and expect it instantly? That's not the way it happens. He hears you. Trust Him. Rest easy. Rest in peace. For, for thou art a God that has pleasure. I'm sorry. For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness neither shall evil dwell with thee it just isn't possible our father is the present in his presence is that Shekinah glory remember it's described as a rainbow which simply means a prism of light of that brightness that beautiful Shekinah glory 
that is his presence, that leaves no place for evil, that drives it away, that burns it up in his very presence. Five, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. And he does. He hates workers of sin. Beloved, if you are in a position where you're following a teaching that leads you to instead of Jesus, that's wickedness. Though it be done in ignorance, God hates it. That's why you see so much turmoil in so many places that trying to teach the true word. The truth will set you free if you will listen to me, they say. I rather say to you, listen to the word of God, not the word of man. It is his word that sets you free. Not a bunch of babblers. Verse 6. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. God's going to destroy them that speak lies, that tell you they're going, you're going to fly away. <clears throat> the Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Oh, now wait a minute, Pastor Murray. Bloody means murder in the Hebrew tongue. God's not going to murder them. They're dealing with more and a far stronger thing, a far more serious thing than murdering a flesh body. They are opening and leading through religion a deception that can destroy a soul if it continues in that way. Thank God it can't. But get away from their lies. Stick to the word of God. Seven. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. Come into the house of God. Come into his house, which is what? His temple. And in their fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. What is his temple today, beloved? Jesus told you. Destroy the temple. I'll rebuild it in three days. He is that temple. He is that building. Come into Christ, sir. The true Christ, not instead of Christ. You see, we still have that stumbling block that God hates that is skewed by ignorance in this earth age. I know I offend some, but it's better they be offended now and at least call out those of the election, those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, and let the others listen to the riddle and not understand it. Hey, lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness. Beloved, this is a prayer we all need to make. Lead me. Lead me where? Lead me in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Because there are so many false teachers and teachers of vanity and lies. Make thy way straight before my face. Make the way, that's the path, through the written word, straight and simple, whereby I can understand for by your word opens and I have understanding of your word. Make it easy so that I can overcome my enemies, God. That's a good prayer that we all need to make. It's a prayer that I make quite often. That he will open the scriptures to my eyes and mind whereby I can be a better teacher. That I can have the knowledge to simplify those things that are difficult whereby we can all understand the clarity and the simplicity in which Christ, through his prophets, and our Father taught. Pray that the road be made straight of understanding. Not a bunch of clouded up things. A lot of people say, oh, don't listen to teachers. Just, just listen to Jesus only. I think it is a sad thing <clears throat> that many seminaries, after teaching God's Word, tell those young ministers now forget about the theology and just teach Jesus you see Christ is that theology for he is not one word he's all of the word and you need the whole word like this psalm and the clarity of understanding into it to be able to follow him otherwise you're ignorant and you stumble around with a milk bottle in your life for 30 years teaching people how to suck a milk bottle that's the first step only. That's, that's really not much of an accomplishment. Is to spend 30 years teaching people how to suck a milk bottle. But that's the 
level of intelligence that spews forth from many cemeteries, places of the dead, seminaries, that is, places of the dead. Jesus only. Oh, I don't take from Jesus' precious name, but he is Yeshua Messiah, the whole word, the anointed. Pray to him that he will open the word to your understanding. And then you will find that peace and that happiness. Until then, you will muddle around in the dark listening to babblers. Nine. For there is no faithfulness. There's nothing trustworthy in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. It's cunningness and ignorance. Their throat is an open supplica. In other words, a supplica is a place for the dead and their very voice leads people to death which is to say Satan, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, Christ said, I will destroy the devil who is death. They flatter with their tongue. Oh, come into our little group or our big group and have life eternal, Jesus only. Suck that little old milk bottle dry and I'll refill it for you. Same ingredients, milk, milk, milk. That's really something to be proud of, isn't it? Think about it. Don't you know that Father is happy with them? Let us pray for the right to study all of his word. Not just a bunch of these bottle suckers that you've got in this end time. Verse 10. Destroy thou them, O God, and let them fall by their own counsel. This has to do with the key night and the false teachers. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. For they have rebelled against thee. In what way have we rebelled against God? By sucking a milk bottle and never going into the meat of God's bread, his life, his truth, his word, the all, including in the uh, inclusive body of Christ. You will remember that this psalm, book of Psalms, opened saying, do not counsel with the wicked. Counsel rather with those of God's word, not the words of man. By listening to one verse, Charlie's, you listen after that to the counsel of man, not the counsel of God. And by their own counsels are they deceived. Eleven. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. You can. You can. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Those that love the name of Yahweh, understanding that name, that sacred name, you can rejoice within that, knowing that he defends you. You know, a person that truly understands the straight way the sila that connects each verse of God's word from beginning to end to debate the one verse Charlie's and the milk bottle babblers would be no contest. No contest. That's one reason you will never see this man probably in a debate. I would not waste my time debating with him except for one subject, the rapture theory. The gauntlet was thrown down and the challenge was sent out. No one ever took the challenge. It would be on live television whereby you could see for yourself how well they understood God's word in the Hebrew, in the Greek, in the Chaldean. The Mosul itself, the original footnotes, not maybe, but fully translated for you to document where they are wrong. I've never had a taker. wonder why. <laughs> I don't think we have to wonder much, do we? Do I know everything? Nope. My father does. And I understand his word. Twelve. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. He will. Listen closely. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Do you know what the shield is when you place on the gospel armor? Faith. Trust in him. Do you know what this compass can be translated as well? A crown. He will crown with his face. That's what the shield is. 
God will crown you with faith if uh, and when he blesses the righteous those that like his truth not the truth and are that is to say the same of man don't you just love these songs aren't they beautiful this sixth psalm is a prayer for relief from the foes do you have any foes this is a prayer for relief with the assurance you must always understand the heading for within it many times is the clue to the understanding without it you would not understand the song to the chief musician again that is to he who has the victory Christ on how is it addressed on Niganoth now I've already told you tonight what Niganoth means I want you to write it in your margin smiting this is Christ on smiting up on something somebody who Sheminit Sheminit a psalm of David by that prophet oh, do you know what Sheminit is? it's the eight eight is the new beginnings it's those that have the victory it's God's elect so this is Christ on the smitings upon the elect you take persecution for teaching God's word in truth this is what Christ has to say about that persecution that is brought upon his election O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger. Don't punish me, Father, or chide me. Neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. And don't worry, beloved, he won't. Have mercy or show mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me. For my bones are vexed, they're sick and shaken, and my body is getting weak. Lord, strengthen me. Don't worry, you ask in that respect openly, and he will. Three, my soul, did it say body? My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Make it soon, Lord. Make your return soon. My mind and spirit grow tired. Strengthen me. One more verse. Return, O Lord, and deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake, for your very kindness and for your love. When you ask in that way, I don't like to stop in the middle of one of these short psalms, but we're going to have to. We'll pick it up there and we'll regain the thought. This psalm is a prayer for relief of the foes, those that would smite thee. We'll see in the next lecture. Don't miss it. Bless your heart, you listen in a moment. I want to share something with you. The first six chapters of Genesis, we like to call it the tape series 146. What an introductory to God's Word. You know, if you don't understand the very beginning of God's Word, there's no way that you're going to understand any of the rest of it. Uh, it is that beginning, the unraveling of our Father's Word, showing you how the races were created on this earth. There would be no racial problems if all people simply could understand the first six chapters of Genesis. The deception by those fallen angels uh, as they uh, bore children uh, by women, the daughters of Adam on this earth, uh, bringing to, into being the Geber, the giants. Uh, that this in itself bringing about the flood Noah's Ark, and what was really aboard that Ark? Let's study God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, whereby you can take a more in-depth look at our Father's Word. Many of you have known from birth that there was more to God's Word than you had been taught, meaning in that period of time, from your birth to your present age. Never before have you had an opportunity to gain that knowledge and to put forth in such a simple way that any English reader can understand the Hebrew terminology even of the world that was Tulu Babuhur in verse 1 and 2 of that first chapter of Genesis giving you a look at the events that actually took place that is not commonly taught but brought forth uh, verse by verse in such a way that anyone can understand both the world age that was and this particular age, letting you know 
the wishes of your father even for you, even in this generation. 146 from the Shepherd's Chapel. All right, bless your hearts, we're back and say they found the number. There it is, 1-800-643-4645, and in this great state of Arkansas, 787-5556. Boy, I tell you, our questions are about to run me over, but we're going we're gonna to hang in here. Okay, uh, not to mention this on the air, but I am corrected for having stated... Let's see, what's my Thursday's program? The 7,000 fell from Satan's camp in Revelation 11:13, and then I'm asked to be careful about answering questions too quickly. Is that what this says? You see, friend, whoever you are here, I wasn't addressing when they fell. The question was, when did they die? Quite a difference. They fell, Revelation 6. We could even go back further than that in the Hebrew to Zabuva the Kiddo. But Revelation 11.13 is correct. and uh, I don't know all answers, but if I don't know, I'll, I'll tell you and warn you. Okay, and request a prayer. Having surgery on the feet at the end of this month. Father's able. You hang in there. You're doing good. To remove the occult. Okay, I understand the prayer. I think we won't go into town Father knows he can handle. Alberta needs prayers for her health. Feels that her church has fallen apart. Would like prayer for it. Christ is able. If it's a church that should stay together, it will. If it isn't, sooner the better. That may offend, but God's in control. Trust him. Trust him. William, prayer I have MS and it is starting to affect my vision. Well, God bless you. Well, this is hanging in there. The father's able. Milta, please pray for my family, our family, and a 21-year-old son who was killed in Hawaii. Um, the hurt is still very real. I know it is, dear. And you just know that Christ is able. He's with him. Some people are too good for this world. Those that are too good for this world, God calls home. We'll join him soon. Don't you worry. Jim from North Carolina. Request prayer for his daughter-in-law. Tuesday, she's going to have one of the doctors see concerning surgery. This is prayer what the Father will take care of this, that no surgery be needed. We'll just see what we can get done about that. Edith, uh, needs uh, your prayer for, for uh, again, uh, badly. After you prayed for healing a couple of months ago, he did not require insulin at all until his in, infection uh, started. Uh, okay, the father is able. And incidentally, a child that had hepatitis, I missed that. We, were, we prayed for him. They went back, they tried, there, was never, there were no signs in that system as though he had never been there. Jesus loves uh, his children. Let's see if that's all the prayers. It seems to be. Father, you hear the cries of the children. Father, we know that you hear. For as it is written in your word, and as men and women of God and children of God, as we join together in this hemisphere, touch, heal, and lead in Jesus' uh, precious name. Thank you, Yahweh. We love you so much. You know, that's where the difference between the babblers and the true spirit. We see miracles. We thank God for it. Peter from West Wisconsin. Second Corinthians chapter four verses three and four. If our gospel be hid, it is hid in them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine upon them. Please explain. What or whose gospel? The gospel of Christ. In other words, what he has said is the gospel of Jesus Christ is open to all. If it's hidden from anyone, it's to those that are under Satan's camp. For the uh, prince of this world, or how is it worded in the scripture there, uh, in whom the God of this world. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Satan is the God, a small g, of this earth. 
this cosmos, this earth age. Understand what I'm saying. Don't start hitting the phone without thinking and using the gray matter a little bit as to what I said. He's the God of this this earth, this um, uh, corrupt moral establishment called the second earth age. And that's what it has reference to. It's hidden from them. Okay, Burdell. And Burdell, I understand your thoughts concerning computers. In fact, it has already been experimented with, combined with video, carrying messages to people in flashes. Uh, uh, we understand. Okay, no name, no state. Has Arnold ever heard of William Myron uh, Brainham of Jeffersonville, Indiana in the 50s and 60s? He is a true prophet. Hmm. I've never seen a book by him in God's Word. Strange. Very strange. He's the true prophet instead of Arnold. You know, there are squirrels, squirrels, and more squirrels. All right? Just don't ever get caught up with squirrels. All right? Okay. My husband is a good Christian and would like to be baptized. There seems to be no way unless he affiliates with a church. Is it necessary he be baptized to be saved? Well, Christ was baptized, and we should, we should be baptized if he... No, but any Christian can baptize him. You know, we don't possess a baptistry. I baptized, uh, what was it, 26 or 7 people down here in Savannah. It's where Tulsa gets their drinking water. We had some holy drinking water that week because we, we washed a lot of sinners. <laughs> well, I, we don't want to get in trouble with Tulsa. But how precious it was. But all you have to have is a body of water. I prefer a body of running water, but let it be outdoors or whatever. And any Christian can baptize him. And uh, let it be done. There's, uh, you don't have to join a church to have it done. You don't have to be a minister to perform it. Any Christian can baptize in the name of Jesus, in the name of, uh, of Yeshua. Uh, we went through that in the last lecture. What does Jesus mean? It means it's the Father's name, the Son's name, and the Spirit. It means, when fully translated, God's Savior, which is to say His Son. Question, and this is from Ray, or Mrs. Ray. Please answer on air. Do you think names are given randomly, or do you think God has a hand in it? Well. Certainly in the Bible days he did. Does he still yet? Well, it's interesting. Interesting. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is, uh, I'm not copping out. I think in some cases he does. Mary from Indiana. My husband and I have been unable to have a child because of a problem. Is it wrong for me to still want a child? I'm sorry, I wish you had given your age. No, it doesn't. It doesn't nothing wrong with that the Bible does not the Bible does say blessed are the barren yes but it's speaking in a spiritual sense and it has to do with what are those that are with child when I return it doesn't mean a, it's speaking spiritually it means those that are impregnated with Satan's deception the mark of the beast which is to say the rapture theory those will not wait for the true Jesus to return but God placed man and woman on this earth to replenish it. And my husband believes that God does not grant us a child because of past sins, even though we have both uh, been forgiven. Would this be true? No, it wouldn't. And I don't want to disagree with your husband, but Christ gives you a clean slate. Another reason why I should not, any other reason why I should not still want a child. No, not at all. I, I would appreciate an answer on the 16th to 17th. Okay, we made that, but don't be uptight about it. Just love each other. Be happy with God's blessings and um, uh, seek advice. If you're still, uh, you know, seek advice uh, from your doctor. Talk to him. But um, God 
sometimes has a purpose for his election rather than child rearing. Leave it in God's hands. Trust him. Okay, Edward from Georgia has only been listening for one week and is very interested. Well, real good, Edward. I hope you're still with us. Florida. Um, this concerns baptism. I'm a Methodist and I was sprinkled. I feel very comfortable with this. I feel as though I was filled with the Holy Ghost as much as possible. Our church gives the reference to the individual as the sprinkling, pouring, or submerging. This is why I like our church. What do you think of this? Well, uh, my dear, I think it's wonderful. If you're happy there, stay there. That's, that's what if you find peace in that, that's where God would have you. Just stay right there. Robert from California. Concerning the rapture, we shall come back with a, he shall come back with a shout at the trump and the voice of the archangel. Does this scripture not concern the rapture? I've been watching for a very short time and I'm surprised you do not advocate the rapture theory. Well, it's not in the Bible, first off. The word is not mentioned in God's word or anything connected to it. What trump is this? It's the seventh trump. It's when Christ returns to this earth to stay. Not going anywhere. He, the word resurrect. Uh, any of you that have a Greek, if you have a strong concordance with a Greek dictionary, look up the word resurrect. You can be resurrected right today. It simply, it has three meanings. It, one is simply to stand up for Christ. That raises you to a higher level of thinking. Uh, morally, to return to the spiritual truth, not this stuff you hear today, in large part, but the Word of God. Um, no, it means it's the seventh trump, and it has nothing to do with the same song stories. I advise you strongly, read Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Paul tells you when Christ will return. And he said, don't let any man deceive you or any babbler or any other letter that I wrote you, including 1 Thessalonians. Christ is not going to return until after Antichrist sets foot on this earth. In Jerusalem, specifically, claiming to be Christ or God. Levi, from the Bahamas. Well, God bless you, Levi. It's good to have you with us. You people in the Bahamas are very dear to us. In the Western Hemisphere, will we know instantly when Antichrist arrives? Absolutely. It will be made worldwide. Remember this. He is supernatural. He's not a human being. He's not going to enter a human being. He's going to appear in the clouds, much like the rapture theory people think that Christ is going to appear to fly them away. It's the first woman that's taken in the field. It's Antichrist. It's better said, let's say it correctly, instead of Jesus. And they're going to fly to him. That's part of it, and it's sad, but it's true. I know, again, it's better that we offend them a little than watch them fly away to nothingness, that is to say, to Satan's arms. Deborah from Texas, and welcome again, all you down in the Bahamas. We appreciate you. Deborah from Texas, how do you know when you, you're not supposed to tell someone the word, when you... Okay. Is there such a thing as a silent type sermon spreading, person rather, spreading the news? Do I approach people? No, Deborah. God has a way of causing people to ask you questions. Your very spirit and the Holy Spirit in you can cause someone to seek that comfort and pleasure that you have. If they ask, ask you a question, then answer it. You know, if it's, uh, if, if you feel led of God. He'll, he'll tell you. None of us should make fools of ourselves handing tracks out trying to force the beautiful pearls to swine. Johnson from Texas. I hear you mentioning our senators and congressmen that are red. And I wonder why I never hear you say anything about Colonel North giving away or destroying government papers. Oh, well, I thought I'd said something about it. You wouldn't want him to leave precious documents for those reds to get a hold of, would you? I mean, Colonel North is a hero of this nation. He planned the Grenada invasion by hiding it from the news media you're hearing now really down by the good old American press. I thought I had mentioned how precious it was that he destroyed those papers. You see, there were numbers of men there that some of those congressmen, the ten that wrote the letter to Commandante, 
would have released to the press and there would have been some good people lost their lives, some patriots. No, Johnson, down in Texas, <clears throat> I'm sorry I missed talking about them. Or why you never mention the 10 Marines who have given away our Soviet embassy. Hey, friend, why don't you go cram it? Cram this stuff right up your nose. Have you heard? Have you kept up since you made this call? One of the Marines is, has been proven innocent. You know why the media likes to hype things up? And Johnson, you're just the type that likes to swallow it, hook, line, and sinker. Go on and deceive yourself with the Reds. Go on and swallow their little line about how precious the communists are. Watch one of them as they try to make a break from East Berlin to West and they shoot him down like a dog and then tell me how precious they are. Colonel North destroyed some telephone numbers and praise God he did. That's the way a real patriot acts. Not like the ten congressmen that wrote the dear Commandante letter. Destruction and traitors within our own Congress. Wow, I'm, and I'm, I'm glad you reminded me, Johnson, to mention Colonel North in the papers and his loyal secretary. Okay, Lawrence from West Virginia. Boy, that did me good. I just feel good all over my body. Now, thank God for Johnson. I hope God gives him a special uh, bonus there in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Lawrence from Virginia. I am confused about the rapture, as have, as have been taught this all my life. My question is concerning Matthew twenty four twenty. But pray ye that your flight be in the winter and not on the Sabbath. Is this not speaking of the rapture? No, it is not. It sure is not, Lawrence. It's speaking of the abomination spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place of Judea, and you better flee Judea. You could only travel a little over a half a mile on the Sabbath to get away from Mount Zion because God's going to blow it up. He's going to turn it to sand. Jesus said so in that same Matthew 24. Greek is very specific. You can't work in rapture when the subject is Antichrist appearing on this earth. And your fight be in the winter? Kaboom in the Greek. What does it mean? When do you harvest? You don't harvest in the winter. You harvest in the fall or the spring. In other words, don't be picked out of season. That's what it means. And unfortunately, all those that teach the rapture theory will be picked out of season. Uh, Mr. Douglas from Washington. First time viewer just loves the teachings and the commentary on the wrongs of our government. Uh, would like more info on the ten traitors who wrote the letter. Oh, I said it was akin to uh, treason. Uh, do have any? Do they have any connection with the ten of Revelation 13? Only that they're doing the work of Satan. Anytime you attack this great free nation and try to inbreed within it red uh, ink from this little cancer we have down at Nicaragua, then certainly you're going against God's plan. It's very spiritual. I'm glad you enjoyed the commentary. Uh, the letter will be published in our next newsletter. I understand here that you requested to be on it. You will have a copy of it. They will be delivered to all of you about the first of the month. You will have a copy of it with the ten who wrote the letter. May this May we continue to have a voice to keep things in their proper perspective. It's just like Colonel North when he planned Grenada. The press was so burned up. You know, it was the first successful attack or victory we've had in a long time. You know why? Because the news media was not informed, nor was most of Congress. Because those ten birds would have been there as well. Okay? That's the whole point. May we continue to be able to... to set the record straight. If Cain did become Sargon, as many scholars think, how old would he have to be? We always have that, God said in the day, and a thousand years is as a day, so I'll let you be your own judge. Ray from Pennsylvania, exactly when do the deeds that have already, I'm sorry, the dead that have already died receive their spiritual bodies after the physical is gone? Now that's the last trump, or somewhere in between, instantly, instantly, they step from the flesh body. The soul must have a body to dwell in or it's a wandering spirit. 
God will not leave us that way as the evil spirits are. You step instantly from this flesh body into your spiritual body. Instantly. Read of it in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, that book that is written to those that live in the flesh. Toby from Las Vegas, what tribes does Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John come from? It isn't written, however, Matthew's name was Levi. That could be a clue. Tommy from Georgia. Will there be any women as we know them now in the spiritual bodies during the millennium, or will we all be sons of God again? Jesus said we will all be as the angels. Uh, I've always been partial to women, and that's one part that uh, um, I'm jesting. We're going to be however Jesus wants us, and that's wonderful. We praise God for it. Harry from Pennsylvania. What scripture do people use to say the 12 tribes are not still separated? Why won't people accept that the two sticks are not joined? Primarily, Harry, your proof, best proof is in actual life, as it most often is. They don't even know who they are. So certainly they couldn't be joined. I would advise the little book, The Abrahamic Covenant. Hey, we're out of time, and I'm sure behind on questions already again. I love you all, and I love to spend this time with you. It's so precious studying his word, receiving direction from him. As it is written, that's how it will be. Well, we're supported by your tithes and your offerings. If we've blessed you, all, uh, all the income that you put comes right back into buying time for you so that you can take part in this. Let God bless you by assisting us as we join together to wave his truth, to set that standard, the word of God, the true word of God, using common sense always to take that word and teach it, to bring joy into the lives of people and comfort and that peace. The most important thing is saying the word every day, and it's a beautiful day. Jesus is the living word.